our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. Nos programas offer plusieurs langues. Veuillez visiter suprememastertv.com bar oblique schedule. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Visiten suprememastertv.com barra inclinada schedule. Nuestros programas ofrecen varios idiomas. Acesse suprememastertv.com barra schedule. Amare karyakram pesh kiye jate hain kai bhashao mein. Kripya dekhe suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. Omen de jemu te gong to chong yuan. Chien kan suprememastertv.com xie xian schedule. Rancangan kami menawarkan banyak bahasa. Sila kunjungi suprememastertv.com slash kehadapan schedule. برامجنا متوفرة بالعديد من اللغات يرجى زيارة suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule Наши программы предлагает много языков Пожалуйста, посмотрите suprememastertv.com Касачерта скежил Сарде программ пеш кардихан анек пашава Кирпа дейкхо suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule But still, you already cut off defilement in one department. But if your mind is still doesn't cut off the thought of killing, or violence, or harm to others, then uh, you can get out of the Kantara that. Kantara, this world. The same thing is falling again and again in the dust. And carrying this dusty body, which is made of dust. Please continue watching to find out more. Supreme Master Ching Hai's lectures are not a complete meditation instruction. Please do not try alone. For free of charge guidance, please visit godsdirectcontact.org or contact any of our centers near you. Today's episode will be presented in English with subtitles in Arabic, Olaxis, also known as Vietnamese, Bulgarian, Chinese, Czech, English, French, German, Hindi, Hungarian, Indonesian, Japanese, Korean, Malay, Mongolian, Persian, Polish, Portuguese, Punjabi, Romanian, Russian, Spanish, Telugu, and Thai. Xin thân ái kính chào, quý khán giả tuyệt vời. Tôi tên là Trang Quỳnh, từ Âu Lạc Duyên Giáng, còn được biết là Việt Nam. Người dân chúng tôi ca ngợi lối sống nhân ái của quý vị, giúp địa cầu chúng ta tươi sáng và xinh đẹp hơn. Mana là một người anh em trong cộng đồng 54 dân tộc của đất nước Âu Lạc, Việt Nam. Họ thường cư trú ở vùng rừng núi cao và sống theo từng làng với luật lệ riêng. Luật pháp của làng mang tính chất răng dạy nhưng luôn lấy sự khoan dung, hòa giải làm trọng. Người Ba Na sinh sống chủ yếu dựa vào nghề làm vườn, trồng lúa. Phụ nữ Bana nổi tiếng với kỹ thuật dệt thổ cẩm rất tinh tế, làm ra những sản phẩm không chỉ đẹp về hình thức mà còn ẩn chứa sắc thái văn hóa, thể hiện một tâm hồn phong phú, phóng khoáng. Đặc biệt, kho tàng sử thi của dân tộc Bana đã được Bộ Văn hóa công nhận là di sản văn hóa phi vật thể cấp quốc gia. Trong số đó, đồ sổ nhất là sử thi Tam Dông. Nhìn vào sử thi của Ba Na, người ta không chỉ thấy lịch sử của một dân tộc dũng cảm, mà còn nhận ra tính chất hiền lành, còn cù và yêu quê hương của người Ba Na qua bao thế hệ. Thật vinh dự để chia sẻ đôi nét về vùng Tây Nguyên hùng vĩ của Âu Lạc, Việt Nam với quý khán giả nhân từ. Nguyện cầu thiên đàng ban phước quý vị thăng hoa tâm linh qua lối sống thuận chay từ bi.
trong hơn ba thập niên, Ngài Thanh Hải Vô Thượng Sư đã soi sáng thế giới bằng giáo lý thiên liêng. Là một vị minh sư toàn giác, Ngài truyền đạt pháp môn quán âm cho những ai khao khát tức khắc tìm lại thượng đế tánh bên trong, hầu đạt được giải thoát vĩnh hằng trong kiếp này khỏi vòng sinh tử luân hồi. Pháp môn quán âm đã được tu tập bởi tất cả các vị minh sư như Đức Phật, Khổng Tử, Guru Nanak, Chúa Giêsu Kitô, Lão Tử, Thần Krishna, Thần Mahavira, Nhà Tiên Tri Mohammed, Hòa Bình đến với Ngài và nhiều vị khác. Ngài đã nhấn mạnh nếu chúng ta luôn tưởng nhớ Thượng Đế, phục vụ tha nhân một cách vô ngã và thuân theo luật vũ trụ, chúng ta sẽ đạt được tiềm năng tối thượng của con người và thật sự hiểu được mục đích của mình trên địa cầu này. Ngài Thanh Hải Vô Thượng Sư là một tấm gương sống phi thường về lòng từ bi. Ngài thường xuyên cứu trợ bằng hiện vật và tài chính, đồng thời gửi gắm tình thương cho những người tị nạn, vô gia cư, nạn nhân thiên tai và những người cần được trợ giúp khác. Ngài Thanh Hải Vô Thượng Sư xin sâu sắc tri ân Thượng Đế tự ái vì sự trợ giúp tài chính, tiện nghi và sự hỗ trợ cho những mảnh đời bất hạnh, thiếu thốn và hoặc cho tất cả các nghĩa cử cao đẹp đã được thực hiện trong những năm qua như một công cụ khiêm nhường, chuyên chở lòng từ bi và tình thương của Thượng Đế đến những người con quý giá của Ngài. Ngài Thanh Hải Vô Thượng Sư đã nhận rất nhiều tình thương và sự trợ giúp từ các tổ chức giới truyền thông, chính phủ và các cá nhân cũng như nhiều giải thưởng như giải Gucci Hòa Bình năm 2006 được xem như giải Nobel Hòa Bình của phương Đông giải lãnh đạo tâm linh thế giới năm 1994 giải Mahavir năm 2008 cả hai ngày 22 tháng 2 và 25 tháng 10 được tuyên bố là ngày Thanh Hải Vô Thượng Sư một công dân danh dự của Hiệp chuẩn Quốc Hoa Kỳ Vân vân. Và qua nhiều năm, Ngài đã được vinh danh với rất nhiều giải thưởng khác cùng những lời ngợi ca về hoạt động nhân đạo và thiện nguyện cao thượng của Ngài. Xin thứ lỗi cho chúng tôi vì đã không thể kể hết 
nhiều giải thưởng và các vinh danh khác do giới hạn về thời gian và không gian. Là tiếng nói chân thành cho các bạn thú xinh đẹp, Ngài Thanh Hải Vô Thượng Sư khuyến khích lối dinh dưỡng thuần thực vật, hòa bình và bác ái. Và những viễn cảnh tươi sáng với sự thức tỉnh của nhân loại về sự thiên liêng của muôn loài. Một thế giới thuần chay bình yên và huy hoàng nơi các bạn thú và con người sống trong hạnh phúc hòa hợp. Những sáng kiến của Ngài nhằm phổ biến xu hướng thuần chay rất đa dạng, bao gồm phương pháp tờ thông tin lối sống mới, chủ nhà hàng thuần chay quốc tế Loving Heart, các công ty thực phẩm thuần chay, các sản phẩm lông thuần chay, truyền hình vô thượng sư cũng như việc trao đổi thường xuyên với quan chức chính phủ có tầm ảnh hưởng và các nhà lãnh đạo giới truyền thông, cũng như tham gia các buổi hội thảo truyền hình về biến đổi khí hậu, vân vân. Dù chúng ta có nhận biết hay không, những nỗ lực của Ngài đã mang lại ảnh hưởng to lớn tới nhận thức toàn cầu về lối sống thân thiện với các bạn thú. Và làm sao lối sống tự ái này có thể mang đến hòa bình trường tồn giữa các quốc gia, đồng thời cứu địa cầu khỏi nạn biến đổi khí hậu và thiên tai. Qua nhiều năm, Ngài Thanh Hải Vô Thượng Sư đã du hành khắp thế giới, từ châu Mỹ đến châu Phi, từ châu Âu đến châu Đại Dương và đã tổ chức hàng trăm buổi thuyết giảng trước công chúng cùng các đệ tử về nhiều chủ đề tâm linh. Hôm nay, chúng tôi hân hành được trình chiếu một trong những bài thuyết giảng sâu sắc với tựa đề Kinh Lăng Nghiêm, bốn lời minh huấn về tánh thanh tịnh, đoạn tâm tham dục và sát sinh, phần 5 của 6 phần trong tiết mục giữa thầy và trò được giảng bằng tiếng Anh vào ngày 22 tháng 12 năm 2018. Until, until I prove to you why the Buddha is vegan, not vegetarian. And probably Jesus was vegan too, okay? It's just that uh, he didn't say anything or there's no trace of it. So we just presume that he was vegetarian. Yeah? Because a seem supposed to be vegetarian, okay? But mostly vegetarian, they ate pure food. You know, not like nowadays, they eat fish and seafood, you know, the shrimp and stuff, and they call themselves vegetarian. I said, what kind of vegetable that swim around in the sea like that? Huh? What, what kind of vegetable that swim around? <laughs> yeah? Have a face, breathe in and out, and go to eat, <laughs> and blinking eyes, waking tail, and stuff like that. What kind of vegetable is that? Huh? You see the shrimp, they, the shrimp, they also swing their tails to swim. The, the fish also swing in their fins and all that to swim. What kind of vegetable is that? Fred, is that a vegetable? No. No. See, telling you. They call them vegetarian, eating all that. <laughs> so, it's not like when the Buddha or even Jesus ate vegetarian. Mm. Maybe they probably drink a little milk here and there when, when they're sick or if people even offer it to them. Okay? The monks, they come out for arm, yeah? But the Buddha said, if there's meat in the bowl, you take the meat out and eat just the vegetables, okay? So, it's not that easy to just go out and, and bake and, and eat anything. It's not like that. And most people, I don't, I don't think they pour the milk on top of all the vegetables and rice when they give it to the Buddha. So, milk is not always, like, available. It's not that. So, even if they are vegetarian, it's very unlikely that they even have a chance to have milk. So nowadays, if they drink milk, eat egg even, they call themselves vegetarian. I don't think they offer that to Buddha. Even offer the Buddha, say, take it aside. I will show it to you soon. You know why? I tell the SMTV staff to change the Buddha into vegan, not vegetarian. I want I want to keep it. The calendar is still on. <laughs> yeah, your master. Huh? and talk, huh? Ooh. 
I can also go back to my room also. You know. I wasn't really like very enthusiastic to come and talk to you. Of course, you are here already. I feel I should, yeah. Well, I was very, very uh, not very strong, not very like. Oh, whoa, you know, I'm going out to talk now. Would I know? I wasn't very good. Okay, a lot of working, rushing before the retreat so that I can go to the retreat. Even the last minute, this early morning, four o'clock, they say ten. Talk to And I work until I don't know eight o'clock, eight thirty. I mean, all night already. I don't four o'clock. I can go to take a rest. No, cannot. Hey, even I won't be treated. They send me to work. Imagine that. Yeah. And then all kind of irregular activity. You know, make the body kind of well, huh? Not that I don't love you, I really love to see you, absolutely. And now I'm here, I feel like, okay, I could talk, but when I come back to the room, it may be a different <laughs> dimension. <laughs> Not like I'm really enthusiastic to come out and forget the calendars and that stuff, it's not really. <laughs> but I could go on with you around. Huh? I guess you're enthusiastic uh, uh, spirit, nah? your love. Uh, you are who that and clapping all that, you know, good for the ego. And then they say, oh, you can come here. It's a lot of rewards. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I just love it. <laughs> That's the only drive, okay? That's the only drive that, that makes me drive this body. Yeah. How can you keep driving your body for so many days on end without sleeping and Eating just uh, something, or oh, not eating, you know, can you drive your body like that? It's only love that can do that, yeah? Only love, I think, that can do that. Love drives it. Hmm? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I deserve it. <laughs> I deserve it, same as you. <laughs> but just like the parents, I'm just thinking to myself, you know, now that I'm talking to you and I ask that question, I'm just thinking to myself, it's just like the parents love the children so much that they spend sleepless nights taking care of their ill children and go to work endlessly, two, three jobs even, just to afford them to go to college. Even just doing normal job, it's not like a very high paid job, doing two, three jobs, going to sleepless nights and eating on the road and enduring all kinds of hardship or humiliation just to put the children into easy life and to, to college or to education, whatever they they can afford. Yeah? I think it's like love it drives you. Even if you're dead you get up again. <laughs> Could be. So even when I'm coming out talk to you or when I go out on lecture tour, the way I talk to people would think, Oh, she loves this job. Ah, she is strong and healthy and oh, very energetic. It's not hundred percent true. It's not. <laughs> All right. Uh, continue. Further, Ananda, if living beings in the six paths of any mundane world have no thought of killing, he explained further. What next? Okay. After lust, what's next? That drives beings to re uh, migrate. Yeah. Again and again in this. A vicious circle of life and death. So if the beings in the six class, the six class now including humans, okay, and the diva, yeah, and what else? Buddhists? Six class are okay, two-seven, I know, I know, then after all, I know, then then. Sima, nuns, yes? Hmm? Okay, okay. I'm certified with the nuns here already. All right. So that means, nevertheless, for the Asura, meaning the astral beings, the first word that we have to pass is astral world, yeah? And the beings there, we call them astral being or Asura. Asura, Sanskrit term for astral beings, you know? These astral beings, but they are also very uh, benevolent astral beings as well. 
meaning these beings, whether or not they are benevolent or vicious, they are asuras. And they are also inside of this sick existence, which can, cannot escape birth and death and destruction, old age and etc. If they don't stop killing. Killing directly or indirectly is the same. Hmm? Because if you don't eat meat, for example, then no one will kill the animals for you. Huh? What? Well, anybody so crazy will go buy a lot of animals and then kill them, just leave it there? Huh? Making no money? It is the money that drive people to raise animals and kill them for food. To sell it to the people who eat it. Huh? If people cease eating them, then there will be no more killings. Right? So eating meat is a kind of also indirect food, right? We support that kind of job. We support that kind of business, yeah, of killing. Yeah. So the Buddha say, all these beings, in including some lower level of heaven, if they see, if they have no thoughts even, not just killing, but thoughts even. Yeah. That's why the Buddha say you have to collect your thoughts, see? Because if you collect your thoughts, then you know. You control your thought, then you don't do the wrong thing. Yeah? That's why. Right. Concentrate on the virtue and moral and compassion and love. So the Buddha said, if these six past uh, beings do not have any thought of killing, they would not have to follow a continuous succession of births and deaths. If you don't kill, you will not die. Are we born again and suffering old age and sickness and separation and sorrow and all kind of pain. So killing is one of the cause of transmigration, yeah, after lust. Yeah, I don't know why the Buddha mentioned lust first. I guess it's because it's the assembly of monks, yeah. Monks, they don't kill anyway already, yeah. So lust is more important for monks. Because monks and nuns, when they came to the Buddha, they were still in the prime of their youth. And these hormonal drive that makes them crazy, make all of the young people trouble. That's why the Buddha mentioned it first. I, I guess, okay, my humble opinion. Don't look at the current. <laughs> my humble opinion again. All right. I have to make it more plain, okay, and explain to you. Because if you read the sutra, some of it are really oh, out of understanding. You can't understand a thing. That's why many people don't, they say they follow such and such religion, but they don't understand what is it, the principle of the doctrines of their faith. Because the masters has long ago left our world and their teaching at that time their talk are also a little different from nowadays. It depends on the master. If uh, the master talk in the very high language, it's more difficult even. And not to talk about this kind of abstract terms, yeah, it's more difficult. And in such a way that not many people can understand. So if I talk a lot, it's just to make it more plain, okay? The calendar is useful, but your understanding is also <laughs> very necessary, yeah? So if you read uh, Sutra alone, it may be very difficult, okay, to understand. Sometimes I read it uh, a little different in a plainer language. Your basic purpose of cultivating samadhi is to transcend the worrisome defilement. But if you do not renounce your thought of killing, you will not be able to get out of the dust. The Buddha means after lust, if you already conquer the lustful mind, but still you already cut off defilement in one department. But if your mind still doesn't cut off the thought of killing, or violence, or harm to others, then uh, you don't get out of the samsara death. Samsara, this world death. Okay, meaning it's not in again and again in the dust. And carrying this dusty body, which is made of dust. Buddha say like that, meaning you can never get out of the physical existence. This is dust. Anyway, I decorated a little bit to make it beautiful dust, but it's still dust. <laughs> Just to make it pleasant to your eyes. I don't know, I keep asking heaven, I'm older now. Can I just wear every day plain, like gray, brown? 
Ah, you know, like those uh, uh, dim yellow, uh, dark and red, even if red. Can I just wear two or uh, one kind of color every day? They say, no, carry and carry and your usual self. Speak in English like that. You yourself. <laughs> <laughs> the former vice president of Taiwan, she's a practitioner of Buddhism, she's vegetarian, very good, very good person. And now she, she sometimes talks very good about me somewhere else. I heard, I haven't heard it myself, but somebody told me that. And then one time she came to visit our ashram in Siwo, if you can call it ashram, I call it trees. Uh, uh, the planted trees the area, no? There's nothing there you can go on ash, a ram, or maybe ash, okay, <laughs> ram, I don't know. <laughs> that is the kind of ash also, you know, right? <laughs> okay, so ash, ram. <laughs> All right, then uh, she asked me whether if uh, in the practicing, you know, is a clothes, dress, is very important or not? Of course, everybody knows I'm a very flowery dress, eh? <laughs> not like ordinary, not like other nuns, so they ask me that question. I think all the disciples of her or follow her, don't they ask her, she asks for them. They say, is it important, the dress, if you're practicing, you know, nuns? I say, not important, of course. But it is very good to wear nuns and monks robe. People leave you alone. At least they don't come and flirt with you. They don't try to tempt you. Then you cut off one of the temptations. The less the better. And then you don't have any hair anymore, then you don't need a comb. Ah, save a lot of money already. So the comb sometimes broke. You don't have to buy new one. And you don't have to wash a lot. And even if you wash, you don't even have to worry about blowing. Then you have another hair blowing machine. It has another expense. And and I come with some luggage. And also, oh, what else? And you don't have to wash it very clean, clean or not clean. It doesn't look so much difference because it's gray, brown color, you know, or black. Yeah, I don't see much of the, <laughs> of the same. Yes. And every, everywhere you go, you just take a very small suitcase. In the Himalaya, even after some years, of, I still carry just a very small those that the monks and Buddhist monks and then carry around them. Yeah, small bag. So the carry so. And I put my second clothes in it. And when I was in Himalaya, I wear only white, you know, timber, simple, Punjabi dress. Only two. I is very simple. So I'm glad to come here so I can leave those behind at least. And then now they bring it here. I did not say anything. I did not want to. I just bring a few and I thought that's enough. I can keep changing, you know. No, they brought some here. <laughs> I'm telling you, you cannot run away. If you want one banana, you get the whole tree. Okay, never mind, I go with the flow. <laughs> and make lemonade out of lemonade. But wearing mango and drop is very nice, very comfortable. The color, it's just gray, you know, <laughs> make you feel very comfortable. Like homie, yeah? When I wear those uh, in other time, I feel very comfortable. You don't worry, you don't, you feel very comfortable, light, simple. Yeah. I just, just feel homey, yeah, somehow. Mm. The color, brown, you know, dirt brown or, or gray, you feel very comfortable in it. Try it. Mm. Next time. <laughs> or maybe it's just your attitude, it's just one of the simple, it's different. Maybe it's not the clothes, yeah? Or one time when I was younger, it's the calendar still there. <laughs> <laughs> When I was younger, I was in Germany, and uh, I talked to a monk, you know, he's a very virtuous monk. He was already 60-something at that time. I was maybe 29, 30 at that time. I asked him I want to become a monk, yeah. He said, why? You're doing well in the world. You're helping the Buddhism, you know, you're doing good for the temple, and you uh, help the monks and the nuns. You're doing well. You don't have to be a monk. A nun. I said, but I like it. In the world, we have to wear different clothes, you know, to go to work, it's all changing, all that, and complicated, yeah? Oh, you're laughing at <laughs> And he said, you don't know. Some monks also complicated. Uh, he said to me, just wearing the clothes, 
A simple clothes doesn't make you simple. It's it like that. I just now remember, and it could be true. It could be true. But at least it's simple uh, physically. You know, you don't have to have a lot of luggage to take care of luggage. You know? Oh, moving houses is really tiring, you know. Uh, just the other day I had to move something here, yeah? Because you are here, you know? So I have to move some of this uh, theater, welcome stuff. You know? Oh, yeah. and I had to do it all alone because I don't have in that situation over there. I cannot ask anybody to help me. Also, maybe they don't know what I want. Okay, so I had to do everything myself, sorting things out, and then pack it, and then I have to select this and that. And I thought, oh, can I do all this? Oh, can I? Can I? You know, very tired. <laughs> don't bother some. And I remember with kind of sadness, regretfulness, when I remember the time of Himalaya, when I have only two pair of bunja clothes, pajama like, and of course some inner clothes and so. That's all I had. And go all the way to the Himalaya, go and cold weather. But when you walk, you you very warm. All the people who were on the horseback look at me like, like I'm a saint, you know. Yeah, insane. Yeah, <laughs> because a girl go alone in the India is not safe. You know that. And the only two pair of clothes, a thing in cotton. You know the Indian cotton, and only one pullover. But I don't ever wear it because I'm hot when I feel hot when I'm walking all day. I feel hot. Even when the rain make my clothes wet, I still feel very warm. And the snow is still abound. The month of May is still a lot of snow around. The army has to cut through the snow in order for you, for the children to walk. It's like a two two walls of snow over on uh, uh, both sides of you when you walk. Like the wall of snow. In some part, yeah? Some part. Oh, well, anyway, it's still cold. I never felt cold. That's why some people, they look at me and they come and want to take me home to worship. <laughs> and then, one guy wants to marry me, remember? He's younger, he's not graduated as a lawyer yet, and he wants to marry me. I was already 30, 31 or something. I said, I'm married and I'm older than you. <laughs> he said, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter at all. But, 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 okay, okay. <laughs> And he's very good looking. Yeah. Anyway, that was old time, huh? Old time, old time. I uh, didn't fancy him, don't think about it. No, no, no. He's just telling you. No, no. I'm just telling you, it's a fool. <laughs> just for fun. <laughs> just for fun. I guess they think I am kind of holy or something, yeah? A girl alone, an Asian, so small, and skinny, and walk alone with one stick and sleeping back, and the clothes I put inside the sleeping bag, you know, one pair of clothes and the pair I wear, you see? And I put over also inside the sleeping bag and I roll it. So it, it looks like I have no luggage at all, just a sleeping bag. So they think I'm a kind of war. <laughs> Magical power, powerful something, deity of some kind, you know, manifesting just to test them or <laughs> something. <laughs> the Indian people are very pure. No, if they walk down from the horse and walk like me, then they don't need anything more. So even though one may have some wisdom and manifestation of Chan Samadhi, you know, if you meditate, you have some wisdom, come out of it, and some Samadhi. But if one does not see his killing, one is certain to enter the path of spirit, meaning kind of goes and de diva, demon, huh? low diva. Not not Buddha, not Bodhisattva, not sainthood. So he say further, at, at best, he, you know, the best for you, even ever, that a person will become a mighty ghost. Wow, how awesome. <laughs> a mighty ghost. If, on the average, one will become a flying yaksha, Oh, at least you can fly. <laughs> Yaksha. <laughs> Meaning a ghost leader or a kind, okay? Just a ghost. 
uh, at the lowest level, one will become an earthbound rakshasa, called like ghostling or something like that. Anyway, kind of ghost. <laughs> you live a kind of ghost, they're all ghosts. Now you know why. The Buddha, the war honor one, the enlightened master, he said that. If you don't see his killing, meat eating, blood drinking, then you will become ghosts. Mighty ghosts even can fly, fly, but nothing else. Right. So beware, yeah? Five precepts, yeah? Mm. No lying, no killing, yeah? Ah, it's coming next, so the one lying coming next. These ghosts and spirits have their groups of disciples, also even have disciples. Each says of himself that he has accomplished the unsurpassed way. It's the same like the other one. After my extinction, meaning the Buddha, Nirvana, in the Dharma and in age, these hordes of ghosts and spirits will abound, spreading like wildfire, as they argue that eating meat will bring one to the body way. They argue. These uh, ghosts and spirits, they say, if you eat meat, you still can, you know, you will go on the body way, meaning you go in the Buddha's direction. Be, be, you will become the Buddha. My God, what nonsense. How can anybody believe that? But somebody does, huh? Obviously. Okay. You want some more? Yes, yes. No? Okay, until midnight, max, okay? 27 minutes. You can use the a calendar sometime. Quý khán giả từ tâm xin cảm ơn quý vị cùng theo dõi chương trình hôm nay tựa đề Kinh Lăng Nghiêm bốn lời minh huấn về tánh thanh tịnh, đoạn tâm tham dục và sát sinh phần 5 của 6 phần trong tiết mục giữa thầy và trò. Tiếp theo là trích tuyển minh triết thiên liêng của giáo phái thông thiên học, tiếng nói vô thinh phần 1 và 2 phần 2 của hai phần trong tiết mục Lời Thánh Khải ngay sau tin đáng chú ý. Xin vui lòng giữ đài truyền hình Vô Thượng Sư để xem thêm nhiều chương trình khẳng định. Nguyện cầu tình thương vĩnh hằng của thiên đàng so sáng tháng ngày của quý vị. Can't hurt it, viewers. Thank you for joining us for today's program entitled The Suranga Sutra, The Full Clear and Unalterable Instructions on Purity, Refrain from Lust and Killing, Part 5 of 6, on Between Master and Disciples. Coming up next is Selection from Theosophy's Sacred Teachings, The Voice of the Silence, Fragment 1 and 2, Part 2 of 2, on Words of Wisdom, right after Noteworthy News. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television for more positive programming. May Heaven's eternal love illuminate your days. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash bmd.